everything. Uh, wow. Um, oh man, that's a tough question. That's a good question. You know, it, it's funny you ask that. Beat writing is just so much about keeping up with the beast, especially a team like the Cowboys that garners so much interest. I mean, people are clamoring for new information and being a good beat writer is just always having the passion and the energy to keep up with it. Yeah, I think it's knowing the team and anticipating what's gonna happen next. What we just saw, what does it really mean? You gotta know this team and that starts here. I mean, that starts with 90 players, understanding roles, understanding their past, and their present, what the opportunities are, and being able to articulate that. I want to run the ball, but in this league, everybody says, oh, you got to throw, you got to throw. I'm like, man, the most demoralizing thing I ever remember working the scouting is it was when somebody was running the football and you couldn't stop it. Somewhere between like a shark tank and a zoo. There's like nine people working in there. We've all known each other for years. We're all just ruthlessly mean to each other. Uh, wow. <laughs> is it? Is it? It's close quarters, and I think after a while, everybody kind of gets on everybody's nerves a little bit. But that's the thing about our group, like, we're pretty close, and I think in some ways it becomes a family. Those guys in there are, they're, they're great people, they're hardworking, and they have a lot of passion for their job. And so what's it like being a state trooper for the state of Alabama? Maybe he helped me carry it up the stairs. Yeah, too, that's right. I uh -huh. broke it. Here, old man, help me carry it up the stairs. <laughs> Thanks, man. He's doing drug deals along the line. What's going on here? He goes, Jerry's? And I go, Brian, bad idea. <laughs> He's just a mix between like super focused tape man, just like got to get to the bottom of how this team is put together. And then other times, He's just like a blustering tornado of talking, for lack of a better word. Just like ribbing people, like, oh, like you're good of you to show up to work. Oh, oh, is that what you think? He's going to just pick out your weakness and prey on it, but it's hilarious. Honestly, like working with that big dumb idiot's one of my favorite things about working here. Dave and I have a tradition that we, every camp, sit right across from each other. Basically just to mess with each other over an entire month. Just see who's gonna blink first, who's gonna have enough, uh, who's gonna wanna fight the other one. Even keeled, hard to rile him up too hard one way or the other, which makes it even more fun to poke at him. Rob, I'm sorry, but it's kinda fun to poke at you, man. It makes people uncomfortable when you say You say? It does. You said, how we doing? And I said, oh, just It does. Look. I said, look that, that is not, yeah. You know the old adage, like, if mom's not happy, nobody's happy? If Nick's not happy, nobody's happy. You can tell what Nick's mood is based on the new mood around everybody else. Like, his mood kind of infiltrates the rest of the room. He's a fun guy to work with. His, honestly, his, like, knowledge of this team is disgusting. Like, going, I mean, it's encyclopedia-like. But let him have that until the season I, gets well, that was, I, No, honestly, that's what I'm what here for. what I was going to say <laughs> is, have is, how can you have a great defense if you don't have a great defensive player? You do. Are you a great player because you had a great season? One great season? Are you a great player now? If you had a great season last year, you're a great player until you show that you're not a great player again. Right? All right? So until he has a bad season, yes, well, he's a great player. Maybe they do have to surprise have a great me. defense with what, they, yeah. with what they're already going to I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I just don't see a great Potato, defense. potato. What? <laughs> I'm going to steal a line from Brian. I'm looking for nobody to get hurt. Like, honestly, it's... Here, it's the blue and white scrimmage, but it's a glorified practice. He's right, man. You still, you know, this is what it does. You hold your breath. I'm looking for good health and maybe, you know, so no, that's about it. I don't even care if there are any good plays. He's right. Not wrong. Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys taking the field for the annual blue white scrimmage. It'll be great today because this is like a game. Another guy, fourth round pick, Dorrance Armstrong, is a guy yes. to watch. It's a Cooper Rush trying to fit the ball down the field. To to Tavon Austin. I'll tell you what, the White does a great job of tracking it in high point. 
Rush firing for the far corner of the end zone and coming down with it is Lance Lenore. How about that, Lance Lenore? Boy, I tell you what though, that was a well-thrown ball from Cooper Rush. He's still experiencing pain in that foot where he had surgery and stolen away by Tavon. So on fourth down, Dak flushed out, heaves it downfield, jump ball situation, and Jeff Heath comes up with it. And the GOAT ends the game. <laughs> Jeff Heath. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. People that come out here and watch these practices, these are some hardcore football fans for sure, because practice is not an exciting thing to watch. When we have a, a, a four o'clock practice and they're walking through the gates at 1.30, that just tells you what kind of fans they really are. Dallas Cowboy Training Camp live in Knoxville. They can do it better than we can. <laughs> this, this fan base is amazing. I tell people all the time, I, I didn't grow up a Cowboys fan, and I used to roll my eyes at the thought of America's team. I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. And then I started working here, and it really, it's such a fitting name. I mean, y'all are everywhere. In a lot of ways, I feel like sports, is, it brings people together like we, like we don't have anywhere else in society. I think it's really important to what we do in life, and that's what makes it so fascinating is, is how many people care about this football team and how big it is part of their lives. To be able to kind of bring something to them about their favorite team every single day, that just brings me a lot of joy and a lot of excitement. Rob bet me I wouldn't wear this ensemble out in public. Don't bet me, because I'll take that bet every time. I think we bet dinner, but we haven't decided where that dinner will be. Hopefully it's somewhere expensive. See you guys tomorrow at 10 a.m. This was Cowboys Break. Hey! You're the man! <laughs> <laughs> Trying to push it, kid. Alright, thanks, y'all. That was the easy show. To sit there and talk football with Nate, Amber, Abe. Easy. Now we gotta get my shirt tucked in, I gotta make sure my hair looks good. Do this interview with Stephen Jones. You were writing thousand word articles. Now you, you, people are telling a story in 140 characters. We're always trying to reinvent ourselves. There's now so many opportunities with the platforms that we all have on DallasCowboys.com. It's a one-stop shop. That's the way I wanted it to be. You come here, you can any anybody that wants Dallas Cowboys news can get it and get it in different forms. The difference between us and, and the outside media outlets, it, it's pretty simple. I mean, we're the official word at the end of the day. And our job is to report on the team objectively just like anybody else. There are definitely our lines and we kind of balance them every day and, and it seems like every case is a little bit different and, and you remember you are uh, the Dallas Cowboys, you're the official website and official app and uh, of the team but at the same time the way we've tried to structure it over the years is we're trying to cover the team like a fan would want and, and not just be the mouthpiece of the team and have some opinions and, and also because if you don't then the fans will find another place to go. It's a new year. Everybody's unbeaten, untied, and unscored on. Thanks for being with us. And Pinion's kick is off to his right. Lewis watches it sail out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. In the gun. Snap on third down. Runs up the middle. He's got a lot of room. 45-50. Turns right. First down. That can't keep happening. Great protection. Deep ball. Come back. Right side. Caught at the three. And Michael Gallup. I've been saying all camp Gallup is going to be a damn good player. Is that what you've been saying? Oh, sorry. As you were listening to me. Seven, a handoff to the right side, and tremendous pursuit by Jalen Smith to run him down for no gain. Wow, that's a major league linebacker. I'll tell you what I've liked so far, Brad. I felt like the, the linebackers had been really active here for the Cowboys in these first couple of series. We saw with, with Smith and with Thomas, they've been attacking today. And on first down, play action, blitz, the ball is tipped in the air and intercepted on a deflection. Running away, that's a big guy, that is Joe Thomas. Oh, you get one foot out? Oh yeah, the stuff came out right there.
This is gonna sound corny, but it's the only thing I've ever wanted to do in my entire life. I, I've never questioned it. I've never woken up not wanting to go to work. I've never questioned whether or not I needed to do something else. And if I ever do have to change careers, I'll be totally clueless. I have no idea what else I'm suited for. I have never woken up and said, I, this sucks. This, this, I'm not doing this today. I've learned through appreciation that people really honestly care about what we do. You know, you, you walk through airports, you walk through the grocery store, you know, people along the fence line here. It, the, the fact that, that they appreciate the job you do makes you get up. My first camp was Bill Parcells' first season in Dallas in 2003. Nick was kind of like my big brother on the beat, took me under his wing. I was with the Cowboys all the way through the 2011 season. Took three years off, did the nine to five job. I mean, I had my weekends to myself, but I really missed this. And out of the blue, Nick gave me a call just to BS about something. And I kind of took it as a sign that if there was another opportunity to come back, I was gonna take it. So it's been really good to be back. I'm grateful every day to be doing what we do. And that's, you know, wearing dry fit every day and hanging out in the sun, it's not too bad. My grades were never good in, in school, ever. I, all I cared about was sports and the Cowboys and all that stuff. I didn't really make good grades. I remember my mom telling me one time, specifically saying, the Dallas Cowboys is not a job. You can't just just work for Dallas Cowboys. You're gonna actually have to make good grades and do something. That can't just be your passion. So I kind of remind her every now and again, maybe it is. 